spoke about the youth in Zambia and their participation in politics. We delve a little further, almost on the same trajectory, but we also just look at youth empowerment as a general. We're going to look at how the issues of land administration in the country gets to affect the youth, that is, if they are actually affected, to what degree are the youths pushing themselves to get to earn or even own land in Zambia. We have uh, issues to do with uh, youth in politics, and of course we cannot run away from the fact that they are in large numbers, and uh, the COVID-19 that is among us, really, the youth have a huge role to play, especially when it comes to mindset shift. On the program, I'm joined by Mr. Kamwanga James, who is coming from the Copper Belt, actually, and he is representing the MMD Copper Belt branch as the secretary. Mr. Kamwanga, good evening and welcome to Blunt Talk. Thank you very much and uh, good evening, our viewers. We um. are actually uh, at a time when um, many people are scared of moving up and down. And um, I think from the Copper Belt, we are praying that God should come through for us and stop this pandemic in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Also on the program is a youth activist, Mr. Mwape Msonda. Mr. Msonda, Mr. Mwape, which one should I use? Which one is which? Welcome to Blunt Talk. <laughs> okay, I'll pick Mr. Msonda. Good evening and welcome to Blunt Talk. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I'll start with you, Mr. Kamwanga. I know this is something that we had a discussion off cuff before the cameras were turned on on Blunt Talk. You, you spoke about you not being a youth, and I'm looking at you and I'm thinking you actually had the time to think about it and say you're not a youth. This is something that we have not really seen happen here in Zambia. When it comes to holding on to certain positions and the likes, we've seen um, uh, uh, political party leaders having people that appear to be not exactly youths standing in and calling themselves uh, youth leaders and the likes. I was very much interested when you answered that you're not a youth and I want to find out what do you think would be the effect of having people who do not actually represent um, their being by uh, status, being a youth, being in charge of the affairs of the youth. Let's start from there. Well, um that happens because maybe there is lack of people who are competent enough to do the work. Even in a home, when uh, you have no manpower, your father can do certain things that maybe your elder brother could have done if he was there. So, um, yeah, it is not wrong to put a mature person to be in charge of the youths. But um, really, it is very much important to understand that uh, there the, 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 the are also levels of understanding. Um, different age groups represent um, uh, different activities. There are certain things that uh, I, for one, who has gone beyond 35 years, cannot do because I did some of those things in the past. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I can lead the youths to a certain extent, but if there is somebody who is a youth and is capable of doing that, I think it's very much important to uh, support that person because uh, he understands and he's in this, he still in the same uh, age group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I would say for now. The, the, the members say, Isn't it easier for a person who actually... Uh, knows their standing, who knows where they're coming from, because I'm thinking if I was a youth like 20 years back, the, 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 the situation was different, the economy was different, my expectations would actually relate to the time of the yesteryears. Is that not the same even when it comes to um, having somebody lead you when you're not on the same page per se? Um. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to agree with what Mr. Kamonga said. Uh, I hope I got the name right. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm Kamonga. Okay, okay, okay. I'm actually leader of the church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Reverend Kamonga, I want to agree what, what, with what he has said. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's been a vacuum 
of uh, uh, young people, youths, who were supposed to take over the leadership. And that's why you find that uh, even today, when we want to uh, maybe go deeper and find out the age of a minister of youth, you actually find that is above 35. And if you want to even assess the age, uh, the ages of uh, these uh, uh, youth leaders who are in the political parties, you find that most of them are above the age of 35. And uh, the reason uh, which I have maybe assessed is that uh, most of the young people that are supposed to rise up to the challenge and uh, be there to provide sound leadership, they're actually not there. So you find that in most of these uh, maybe uh, platforms, maybe political parties, you find that most of the young people that are supposed to provide the leadership, they are not there. And you find the, leader, the young people that are there, most of them, uh, uh, if I want to be uh, straightforward, most of them, they lack uh, the qualities that, uh, that can inspire young people to to, to lead themselves. You, Mr. Nsonda, are a youth activist. Yes. What exactly uh, uh, is, is your activism all about? It just enlighten us because we, we, we've heard of so many titles. We, we mm -hmm. know of uh, motivational speakers, yes. uh, life coaches, and the likes. And we also have youth activists like yeah. yourselves. What is your target? So, my. Uh, you know, I wear so many titles. Let's, but let's, but let's when I, the reason why I've drew down to be an activist is that I want to raise awareness in terms of the power that we as young people have in which we can change the society that we live in. Because you believe that the, the, the youth are actually not aware? Yes. Or, because or this uh, is you also uh, wearing a, a, a title, but in the end you're also making an income out of it. Uh, it's not really about wearing the title, mm -hmm. and if I tell you, I, I am in so many organizations. I am in, I'm, I'm, I'm in family planning organization. I'm, uh, I'm a volunteer. I am uh, a, a unionist. Where I work, I'm a unionist. I'm the chairperson for the union. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've got a lot of organizations where I'm a volunteer, and I'm, I'm chairperson there. I'm secretary there, and I, I really want to. I don't want to carry those titles. And that's the reason why I'm involved in so many of those leadership positions. Mm -hmm. It's because I believe that we as young people have got the power to make sure that we can bring the change, the positive change that we need in society. Right. But there is a very few of young people in Zambia that have got so much impact mm -hmm. that can uh, result in us uh, maybe uh, uh, affecting the change that we need. I'll, I'll give you a, a quick example. Uh, I'll give you an example of uh, Julius Malema. Mm. Julius Malema was uh, uh, the ANC president for the young people, huh? for the youth league. He was the youth league ANC president. Mm -hmm. You know, when Malema left uh, the EFF, uh, he formed his own political party. And beyond that, we have seen what uh, the EFF is doing, mm -hmm. even in the South African parliament, contributing to the development of South Africa. Yes. But when we bring it home here in Zambia, mm -hmm. you find that uh, the young leaders maybe take the leadership that is in uh, uh, the, 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 the political parties that we have in Zambia. Uh, can we have the one who's called uh, a youth chairman even for Lusaka or even youth chairman for the party, can, if they were to leave the political parties, their respective political parties, I, I think no one of them can match up to the record of Malema. And you, that's you, why... You're, you're, you're actually twisting my script. I'm supposed to start with land administration, but we're going more into politics right now. Okay, okay you said you were going to give me yeah. um, a quick, quick, so, so quick that, example. So, so that, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to yeah. uh, go at, and that's why I want, when I say I'm a youth activist, that's the awareness I want to raise. I want us as youths to be able to see where we are mm -hmm. and see where we're missing it. Okay, and that's great. why that space is being occupied by people who are not supposed to be occupying right. the space. Yeah. All right. Mr. Kamanga, uh, let me just generalize it. How do you look at um, uh, our, our land administration in Zambia as it right now? I mean, we're coming from a background where we've had situations where as movie TV, we've carried so many stories of, uh, uh, you know, um, displacements, we have so many people who found themselves after staying in a particular area for a very long time, uh, you have other people coming up with papers and saying they've been living on this land illegally. We have uh, people who own huge chunks 
of land to themselves and the majority Zambian is at a stage where they say it is not easy to acquire land and if it is easy the cheapest land which one can acquire would be traditional land. In general how do you look at the administration of land in Zambia? Yeah, um, I think it's tricky my sister when you talk about administration you cannot pull out the rule of law mm. where administration is concerned. So we do have the law in this country which should apply uh, to uh, the acquisition of uh, land. So you can only acquire land by procedures that are prescribed in the, uh, in the, in the laws that, 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 that we already have as a country. So now the problem that we have is that uh, most of the things that we do, not only here in Zambia, but in Africa, but in this particular case, let's just talk about our situation in Zambia. Mm -hmm. It is not easy for a common person to acquire land in Zambia. It's not easy. Why is that so? The reason is very simple. We, I think most of the things that we do, we like copying from from other uh, places like Europe, America, and uh, many other uh, places mm -hmm. uh, with people who have gone far much ahead of us. So it's not only in land, even in terms of the law, mm -hmm. and also many other things. Let me give an example of um, the, how, how we came up uh, with the uh, grade 12 certificate as the minimum qualification for somebody to become a councillor or a mayor or an MP. Mm -hmm. um, that also leaves much to be, to be desired because here in Zambia, I don't think that um, grade 12 is the average level of education in our country because we, if we are above 18 million, how many people have gone to universities? How many people have, 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 have gone up to grade 12? and how many people have not even been to school, and how many people. So if you count, you find that maybe the average level of our education is maybe grade four, or grade three, or grade five. But we jump to grade 12 as our average level of education. That is not, that is not bad, but then we have to evaluate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is what we are doing right for ourselves? That's the reason why you find that if, even the application of the rule of law is somehow very difficult to understand because those who do not have the capacity to protect themselves in terms of finances uh -huh. find it very difficult because the, the law is above a common Zambia. So in that, relation to uh, uh, the, the land administration in itself, you're saying we copy from, from other countries? Yes, we have, we have, we have, we have um, vast land in Zambia. Most of our land in Zambia is not occupied. Mm -hmm. In terms of percentage, this is not a study which I did, but um, I think this is my opinion. Maybe the percentage of the land that we have in Zambia, which is occupied, may not even go beyond 20%. That is the land we have in Zambia. Maybe 80% of the land we have in Zambia has nothing that has... Has, has been done on it. Mm -hmm. There is no development there. Mm -hmm. So if you were to give land to, to the people, you empower the people with land, they can begin to do something to keep themselves busy and also earn an income. But uh, it's not easy to acquire land here in Zambia. The reason is very simple. There are so many people who are interested in land because um, land, to those who are more powerful in terms of uh, financial, fi financial, financial. Uh, muscles, you, you find that they would rather acquire land even which was already occupied by, by others. Why? Because they want to uh, put everything to themselves, which is not supposed to be the case. Okay. So um, the most uh, hit uh, the people that are, 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 are poor. Those are the most people that are in an awkward situation here in Zambia in terms of land because uh, they don't even know how land is acquired. Okay, You go to the Ministry of Lands, 
you find that they don't even know the person to go to. They can enter into any office and they can be given any answer at any time and in the end they lose their land because they don't know. Okay? Now, my area of interest is really the rule of law. And though you were, talk, you, you were saying we cannot talk, we, we, we don't want to get into politics so much because of no, the no, no, you, land, you, you can actually. I, I, I feel that it. everything that we do here in Zambia is linked to a political will. Exactly. The reason why we're talking about land as not something easy to acquire is because of uh, the, the, the policies that are already uh, are put in place by the governments that we have had. Mm -hmm. So, if the government uh, had put policies that, uh, that can help people to easily acquire land, people would have acquired land. And land is very much important. There's nothing that is more important than land mm -hmm. here on earth. That's why even man was created from the soil. Okay? Yeah. And when man dies, he goes to the soil. Mm -hmm. So, land is very, very much important to man. When you have land, you have... Um, ideas you start doing something on land but it's, it's not easy okay. here in zambia all right um mr msonda yeah. are the young people themselves interested in owning land do they even have the capacity to own land uh, of course uh, young people want to own land i'll tell you that uh, myself uh, uh, i want to own land I want to own land, not just uh, a small portion of land, but I want to own uh, uh, large portions of land. Because land, the, the, the importance of land cannot be overemphasized. Because when you have land, there is no limit to what you can do. You can use your land to mine, you can use your land to uh, f farm. Uh, there are so many things that you can use your land. You can sell the land to earn some income. You can, you can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it is the conditions that surround uh, the acquisition of land that are, are, are causing a lot of people who don't have the capacity to not acquire. I want to, uh, maybe I want to bring in a bit, a bit of statistics. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Zambia, according to the information at uh, 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 Central Statistics, we have a total of 750 uh, hectares of land. 750,000, 75 million hectares of land. Mm -hmm. And out of that land, 47% of that land is what we as a human beings, as Zambians, can use in terms of a, that's what's called arable land, mm -hmm. where we can do whatever activities that we want to do, farming and whatever. And uh, the thing is that uh, uh, with the, currently there are, there, are, there are two regulations that uh, laws that that at play that in terms of how land is administered. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been, in, as, a, as a country, we have been engaged in land reforms, I think for, from, for a very long time. And uh, I think as, as of 2018, 2018 going to 2019, there was a draft land policy that was done. Up to now, that land policy has not been concluded. Mm -hmm. I think uh, up, to, up to now, the Ministry of Lands, they have not announced. But the issue is that... Uh, 96% of the land that we have in Zambia, which is arable land, is administered by the, the chiefs. Mm -hmm. And then only 6% is administered by the central government. So when you look at that, uh, because 96% is, is what is called traditional land, mm -hmm. uh, the chiefs, because they want to get some form of uh, uh, income, income out of that land, you find that when you have these uh, investors who come into the country, uh, they go to the chiefs and then they talk to them, you find that most of the land is going to these foreigners. Mm -hmm. And that's why we... What, what security is there? Because I would love to believe uh, the, the land that is uh, um, under the chiefs, mm -hmm. most of it is not titled. Yes. So you go to the chief and you get the land. It's not titled. Mm -hmm. But when an investor comes, they get a huge chunk of land. They actually go to the local authority, the councils, and they get the... They, documents process. So where is and the problem? They, if, if so, the, so, so the problem that is there is, you know, the, we, do, we don't have uh, laws that really uh, uh, restrict the foreigners to buy land. I will tell you that if a foreigner comes into this country, uh, as long as I, I have, uh, he has a work permit, uh, even for one month, two months, three months, that person can buy land. In so this how, can, how, can, uh, if, if, how can the council issue um, a title mm -hmm. 
or, 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 or the authority that issue title, mm -hmm. issue title of land that is not theirs. No, no. They, because the moment they issue the title, I would love to believe then they, somebody has got a paper. No, listen, uh, mm -hmm. the, the chiefs, they, they are administering that land, mm -hmm. the, the traditional land. So when, the, for example, when a foreigner comes and then they go to the chief, the chief gives them land. The chief is the owner of that land, he's a custodian. Yes. So when the chief gives that land, what that means is that it's official. The chief has said, okay, I've given so much land to uh, this foreigner, uh -huh. and this foreigner now will take that land, and they will go and process the documents with the local authority in that area. Uh -huh. So the, 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 the problem there uh, which comes in is that the reason why uh, the chiefs are able to give like that even to foreigners, it's because uh, we, the, 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 the laws are not, are not stiff. I'll give you an example of South Africa. Uh, in South Africa, maybe the problems that are in Zimbabwe, whatever, uh. South Africa, what they have done, in, I think some, sometime in 2017, what they did is that they, they stiffened their law in terms of land acquisition uh -huh. so that even if me, I leave Zambia, I go and marry a woman in South Africa, I won't be able to buy land. Uh -huh. It's only the person that I've married, my wife there in South Africa, who will be able to acquire the land. Same is, goes for Botswana. If you go to Botswana and uh, you want to buy land, you won't buy. You have to foreign. go through a, a local. Yes, now, you find that the, the local person who's there, I will, if I'm, in, I'm an investor, I would have to partner with that local person. So that there's, there's then, a particular then, share. Yeah, so I'll go. Me as a local, I'll I'll get the percentage. I'll say from this investment, my mm. my total contribution will be the value of the land, and then the investor will have that. But in Zambia, it's different. So we have the arable land and the mm. other one. Yes, and we don't know what lies under this land. Yes. Recently we discovered uh, that we have gold in Winidunga. Yes. We have also heard of stories of uh, uranium. Yeah, yeah. Heard stories uranium, of yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you know different precious precious waters. stones that mm -hmm. are, are, are said to be lying down somewhere out there. Are we actually um, tapping into that which God has given us? Why are we still poor when we have all these resources? Um, I, I think um, I'll, I'll speak as a pastor mm -hmm. from the church um, where there is no knowledge people perish just like where there is no vision mm -hmm. people still perish. First of all, do we have any Zambian who has a mind that is recognized by Zambians and recognized outside the country? If we do not have, then it means we have not yet reached there. Yes, we may have the precious stones, but what we lack is knowledge about how to go about the mining. Uh -huh. Yes, we may have a few individuals who are educated, who do understand, uh, uh, they have um, an understanding on how uh, these precious stones uh, can be helpful to, to us and how they can discover them. But to what extent are they empowered? Uh -huh. So, if we have graduates who do not, who cannot do anything concerning that. How about a mere youth who still is looking for help? It's very, very difficult. So the problem that we have at the moment is not because we do not have natural resources. We do have them. Uh -huh. But um, I think uh, we have to admit that we, sti we are still in a learning process. Uh -huh. And this is the reason why we need to be more stable in whatever we are doing. This now brings me to uh, what relates to what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I'm Copper Belt uh, Secretary for the Movement for Multi Party Democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the MMD regime, the issues of land had policies, had they, 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 they are. There are policies that were uh, deliberately made to help people acquire land. Mm -hmm. 
and we saw how people built their own houses. This time around, very few people are building houses. If there are people who are building houses, it's those with big titles. Uh, where where, where, is where are you simple. basing your, 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 your statistics from? Where is they? It's, it's a developing area and people are building houses. People are building every houses all over, yeah? all over. But if you go and count the houses, you find that maybe out of 100 houses, you discover maybe it's only two or three people who are building those houses. This is the reason why you even find that uh, you even have houses up to 52 of them in a country and you do not know the owner of the houses. How were they built? Because they were built by an individual who has got uh, uh, strength to even hide himself. Who can even hide himself without being located? Even when there are process, there are procedures of how that person can be located. Okay? Mm -hmm. Up to this time, do you know the owner of the 52 houses? It's being investigated. It's being investigated. How long has it taken now? And how long did it so take to So what does this speak houses? about? So the reason we, 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 we have these problems is because people can hide themselves in the rule of law because they have the power to do what they want. They, they, so the policies of the, they can of hide, the government... They can hide themselves? They can hide themselves. <laughs> I think you only hide when you know that you're doing the wrong thing. Because, like, really, if I'm, I'm building a house, I'll literally be walking around and showing people... Telling that, 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 that's now, is it the that's right, my project. Now, is it the right thing for a person to build 52 houses without a proper channel of doing that? Is that right? It's not. But who's responsible for that? There must be a person who's responsible for that. So, um, we are in a situation where we need somebody out there to put corrections to certain issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and who's that? the only who's way, the only way we can people? do that, the only way we can do that is, is when we come to an understanding that we have declared this country a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. Now you look at yourselves. Are we Christians ourselves? If we are not really Christians to that extent, what should we do? Okay? You begin to look at what you should do, first of all, to correct yourselves. Because you cannot correct other people if you have not yet corrected yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, even in a home, if you want to get everything for you, you can get if you are the person who is more mature than everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, that depends upon how you feel yourself, okay. your heart. Mm -hmm. So, we have uh, policies that can even make people hide themselves because there are ways and there are, there are loopholes of people to hide themselves. Okay. So, that's the reason why we are saying that let um, the rule of law be straight. Let the, 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 the policies... Uh, the, the, the policies of, of, of uh, uh, how to govern the country be sound so that everyone will be able to understand what is happening in a country. All this right. time around, it's very difficult to understand what is happening. Mr. Msanda, really. yeah. do you share the sentiment? Uh, you know, me, I'll tell you, uh, uh, I think for me, my opinion is that in this country, you know, from 1964, uh, we ha this country has never had a clear uh, policy that talks to the administration of land. Uh, what we have had are just maybe statutory instruments, uh, uh, maybe some declarations uh, mm -hmm. that are coming from maybe the president or the minister and what. And it, they, 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 that I believe that's the reason. And you know, if you do your research. You find that most of the people that talk about land administration in Zambia, they have made reference to the fact that we have never had a, a policy that uh, talks to the administration of land. And that's why we've tried, I think, uh, from uh, people have, have been trying to come up with this policy. And, and I think uh, 2017, 2018, somewhere there, mm -hmm. the, the minister in charge of land uh, tried to push that agenda into, even in, in the House of Chiefs. 
but I think they were they had some misunderstandings between the government and the chiefs because the chiefs were saying that government wants to take over to take their power in terms of uh, like I said earlier where the, the chiefs administer this land and then government the chiefs felt that government wanted to take, out, take their power to administer the land uh -huh. and I'll tell you outrightly we need that policy to be approved maybe I don't know when uh, parliament will sit again I think when we have the policy approved we're going to have a clear path in terms of our land that is administered right. because uh, uh, as long as we don't have a policy that talks to administration of land I think this is the reason why we have a lot of problems you know in this country okay uh, yes yes we, we have a lot of problems before you you you, you, you <laughs> divert into the, the, the other issue so um mm -hmm. uh, let's just um move ahead mm -hmm. when we talk about the youths themselves mm -hmm. you have the statistics i mean you're a youth uh, activist yeah. um, how involved are the youths in issues that can change their livelihood uh, because, uh, you know, for, for, for some people, mm -hmm. when they hear youths and uh, involvement, maybe in politics, for example, mm -hmm. they picture stone throwers. Mm -hmm. When they hear youths, uh, when it comes to land administration, mm -hmm. they picture those that illegally sell land. Yes. So, w youth really, um, it's, it, it's admirable to see a young person achieving a lot. It actually makes headlines, which is not mm -hmm. supposed to be the case. They're supposed to be at the helm of their lives, and yet... Mm -hmm the youths don't seem to be taking up their rightful position. Why is that so? And can you help us with the statistics? Um, the, the, the reason, uh, I would say the reasons why uh, young people in Zambia maybe are failing to thrive and contribute uh, up to the level that we are supposed to contribute to the development of this country, I, uh, uh, I would say that maybe they are, it's twofold. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one, because uh, even the space itself, the, the, the space for me as a young person to come up and uh, um, maybe uh, uh, try to declare that I want to do this. Uh, you see, it's, it's quite difficult even for me. I, I, would say, I, would, I would want to go out there and say I want to get this leadership position. But in terms of uh, uh, financial muscle, usually in Zambia, uh, you see that if a young person wants to go out there and stand, get a position, maybe become an MP, there is a lot of uh, money that is supposed to be involved for you to be able to get that position. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the reason why most young people fail to get the space in terms of uh, uh, getting into these leadership positions. How, uh, how is it in the MMD? Like we've seen... Um, uh, you, you, I, I, I didn't finish the other reason. Oh, they, 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 okay. Hold your thought. Okay. The other reason? Okay, so, uh, and then the other thing, the other reason is that uh, also as young people, because we have seen that the conditions are not allowing, we have accepted it, and we have uh, somehow laid back and, 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 and just taken a position of being, uh, uh, maybe I'll say cheerleaders to uh, the adults that are in this country, mm. which is not supposed to be the case, because nothing is ever given on a silver plate if we want to take over the leadership as it's supposed to be uh you i'll, I'll give an example of uh, uh uk boris johnson the, the prime minister is uh, uh quite ill mm -hmm. although recovering yes. uh you find that the person now who's, who was left in charge uh, I, would, I wouldn't say he's very young he's mm -hmm. 41 but relatively young yes it is. but if in this country you find that uh I think the last time this country had a, 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 a youthful leaders, I think it was 1960, uh, 1964, because you find that in that uh, cabinet to, of Dr. Los Angeles... Boys, Los are youthful leader. Yeah, but, yeah. but majority, majority composition, huh? because mm -hmm. at the time of uh, Dr. Kaunda, when he took over government, he was the eldest, he was All right. 41. All right, we'll, we'll talk about Los yeah. a little further. I'll ask you to answer when I asked, uh, how is it in the... MMD. We've seen most of these other political parties and their structures where young people are. Really, it's not much to write home about. Yeah. Um, in the MMD, we are trying to inculcate a culture of um, making young, young people know that uh, tomorrow they will be the top leaders. How are you so doing since that? today, since today they are young people, 
what we are doing is um, we are trying to advise them not to um, not to be used by elderly people in wrong things. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why you have seen that the MMD of today in the New Hope, the New Hope MMD of today, led by Dr. Nevers Mumba, is different from the MMD of yesterday, where some of the big names that we have today mm. used to be. Um, we had a lot of young people who had violence uh, some time back. Mm. But when Dr. Mumba took over, addressed the youths and told them that we want, is, is we want to create... When he took over the, the time that he won the, the yeah. court case? Or the no, movement? when he took over in 2012 okay. as president okay. of the movement for multi-party democracy, mm. he addressed the youths and um, advised them to say, we want to leave a leadership into your hands, knowing that we are giving this leadership to people who are uh, not only mature, but people who are responsible enough to keep the people and pave the destiny of this country and fight for the peace and the freedom of ourselves, okay. like we are doing. So from the time that um, Dr. Mumba uh, took over as president of the MMD, we have never seen the violence that we used to see in the past. Mm -hmm. The reason is very simple. The people who are leaders are trying to help the youths. We do have uh, actually all the structures countrywide, and youth leaders are there, mm -hmm. but they don't do things on their own. They okay. are guided. Right. Why? Because they are responsible young people. And what we want them to do is to become fathers and mothers that will be able to help this nation. Okay. So the, the reason why some of the youths are not uh, making it up to the time when they become uh, fathers, due to lack of a better term for them, is because they don't want to be late. And if a youth doesn't want to be late, it's very difficult for him to become a leader and lead people. This is the reason why you find that even some people, even when they become leaders, it's very difficult for them to command uh, uh, their followers and their followers to follow what they are saying. Why? Because they have a thorn in them which tells them, which shows to them that they are occupied with violence. Okay. So because of that, it's very difficult for them to uh, put um, good morals in these young people. All right. So um, now, in addition to what I've said, um, what we are trying to do to young people is try to help them, uh, teach them on how to become good leaders. You saw that uh, the MMD was hijacked by some people, and this took three years for the courts of law to guide and uh, tell the group that was not in the MMD to say, you are not doing things by the use of the rule of law. You are illegal. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, it took three years. In the three years, how many youth groups from the MMD did you see throwing stones on some people? We never allowed that. Why? Because we are trying to help them become responsible leaders. But in other political parties, if that was done in other political parties, uh -huh. some of those people who hijacked the party. Maybe but, but, by now. So we can safely say that that wasn't a very good... Some of them would have lost their hands. I would love to say that that wasn't a very good path for, because <laughs> really it showed a particular level of uh, disunity. Yeah. Anyway, let, let's, let's, yes. just, <laughs> so let's just So that's, move that's how youth okay. should be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have all acknowledged the fact that the youths are in the larger numbers even here in Zambia. We are now um, at a time where we are fighting this um, COVID-19. It has come in, it's uh, destroyed nations, economies uh, have, have crumbled because of the same COVID-19. In Zambia, we are actually of the view that um, 
I would love to say for now, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I should use the word luck or we are under uh, a particular we are prote we are protection, <laughs> yeah, because we have seen nations like the USA mm -hmm. really struggling. struggling and hit hard. The huge numbers that we have, the youths themselves, mm -hmm. what is their conduct? We have a whole lot of young people out there in bus stations. We have a whole lot of young people who gather at certain uh, corners mm -hmm. where they conduct their daily activities and just the restrictions that have been put in, in, in place. Are they being followed? Especially that we've seen, like I mentioned earlier, we'll talk about Honorable Sambo. We mm -hmm. saw the arrest of some people who are abrogating the presidential directive. Yeah. I think uh, first things first, uh, I would like to state that um, I acknowledge, we acknowledge the, 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 the steps, the, the legislation, the restrictions that have been put up by the president. And uh, I think it's imperative that all of us as Zambians, not just as young people, mm -hmm. but all of us as Zambians, we adhere to the, those legislations. I think, uh, like you have said, we have been lucky that uh, maybe uh, the virus is not hitting us as hard as it has hit uh, the European countries mm -hmm. and the Americas, those who stay, who are above the equator, the northern hemisphere. Because most of us who are below the southern hemisphere, the, 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 who are in the southern hemisphere, we have not been really hit so hard. So maybe it's an act of God, that mm. uh, not really, uh, maybe, but... It's Jehovah himself who's trying to maybe uh, maybe protect us. Just say God is yeah. helping us and protecting yeah. us. So we that's, why we, that's why we, are, we have not been hit so hard. But uh, it's very important that all of us, we adhere to the provisions that have been given to us. And uh, maybe uh, to, drill, to drill down to Honorable Sambo uh -huh. and what he's doing, I think it's, it's very commendable. Because uh, I, I, I don't know, we as Zambians, we are trying to be irresponsible. And the people that uh, he's rounding up, those who he found in the bar drinking, I think it's, it's very important that we as, uh, as Zambians take it upon ourselves so that we can save the lives. I mean, uh, today is quite a sad day because we heard of a death of a man from Kafue. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, uh, after we heard of that death, I have a lot of friends that stay in Kafue. Most of them. Uh, that man who died there was their neighbor. And we have been calling them asking, guys, what's happening in Kafue? And they tell you, no, that man who died was, is, uh, was our neighbor. And uh, they are all afraid. I mean, these are friends I interact with. Uh -huh. They are always here, we interact with them. And just the fact that uh, we've heard that that man was very close to them, their neighbor, uh -huh. it means that uh, since he, because when he died, nobody knew that he had. COVID-19, but he, he went to Kafue General uh, Kafue exactly. District that, that, Hospital. That's, that's another issue that has come out yeah. to KDH. put questions. Yeah. They couldn't uh, identify that this man had COVID uh, until he was brought to UTH, until he died. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that's when we discovered that that man had actually died of COVID-19. So it's really scary. And uh, maybe my appeal will be to everyone that let's make sure that we adhere to the instructions that have been laid down. Because if we are not careful, we are going to have more repercussions. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, as a country, you know, I would say, the youths, already we have been hit so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, this country depends on the youth. The youth are the workforce of this country. Mm -hmm. If you do your statistics, you find that all, the, almost the entire workforce in this country is composed of people who are from the age of 17, uh, probably up to majority, up to maybe 40 there, or maybe 40 somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So you find these who are occupy the bracket of above 50, uh, uh, they have quite few. So you find that if we talk about maybe uh, industries that are shutting down, the mm -hmm. tourism industry, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, just the other day we heard of Intercontinental closing its doors, sending more than 200 uh, people out of work. Yeah. Those majority of them, they are young people. Mm -hmm. So, we are the ones who are hit most. Yeah. Uh, most of the, ind the industries that are shutting down, we are the ones who are being affected the most. We are the ones who are out of work, and our young families are suffering because of uh, 
uh, this disease. And that's why it's very important that we adhere to the instructions because if we get into a point where now uh, COVID hits us real hard, we as young people are going to suffer. Exactly. And when young people suffer, the economy of this country is going to deteriorate to a level where uh, it will be very difficult to resuscitate it. Exactly. So uh, it's very important that we adhere to instructions mm -hmm. and we choose life over uh, uh, socializing. socializing yeah. Mr. Manga, he's mentioned like uh, uh, the closure of um, um, institutions and you know certain um, like he's cited uh, is it inter Continental and the mines, Mopani, and, and, and yes, those are the things that are affecting the youths most of yeah. most of us. Yeah, how how is um, that is at a, a company level, but in your observation, how is the adherence uh, levels, especially that even when we go around town, we still see people thronging the streets. We were told that only essential workers are supposed to be working on a daily basis and yet the markets are still congested the roads are still busy really it's not as quiet as we have seen some of the pictures from the uh, european countries that are being shown even on on the internet you can see that a, a whole city is completely shut down with no traffic at all yeah uh, firstly i think this is time for us to uh pray that um God gives us the grace to survive this situation and um, we also appreciate that the government is also trying to give a hand and I think um, that, is, that is good and uh, my advice to every citizen of this country is that um, let's do what our leaders are telling us to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, uh, if, if, if they tell us not to uh, write around in the streets, uh, I think it's very much important for us also to look at our lives. Mm -hmm. They are trying to help us protect our lives. So we need to cope up together and do one thing, to help ourselves get protected from this pandemic. Yeah, so um, I would say that um, it's actually very difficult to accept certain situations, mm -hmm. but uh, for preventive purposes, we need to put away some of our freedoms in order to allow uh, God also to intervene. All right. And the we need to pray that um, God also should come through for us. This is not the time for us to even do things which are not uh, good in the sight of God mm -hmm. because we are in the hiding. But this must be the time for us to even uh, bring ourselves closer to God. And my concern also is that um, we have people who have been discharged from the hospitals. I don't know whether it is only one hospital or how many hospitals. Uh, up to now, I don't, th I, I don't know whether the minister in charge uh, has given us the details on which medicine they are using because um, we know that uh, hospitals use medicines and if somebody is tested positive for COVID-19 they are given some treatments mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it will be very much important also for us to know why, what why? treatment <laughs> what would be your are interest? they using. I, what would be your interest? Are you self trying to self-medicate? <laughs> our, our interest is, is, is really to understand that uh, maybe, well, there are people who are in places where there are no hospitals. Maybe they have uh, 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 clinical officers or people that have knowledge about... Uh, uh, how to go about those clinical uh, services. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that for malaria, we have prescribed uh, medicines. medicines. Mm -hmm. We know for every disease that there are prescribed medicines, but for those people who were discharged, mm -hmm. that they were tested negative, yes. what medicine, what treatment, what, what, what medicine did they use? Was it just mere water? Were they being given just mere water to drink? 
Yeah. Can I, for them to flash out that or can I chip in there? So that they, they help us. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I can chip in there, maybe I can provide uh, uh, some of the go, go information. Yeah? Uh, I think uh, I've tried to follow what, what's been happening. I think what the minister has been communicating is that currently there is no medicine for COVID-19 and that's worldwide. We know that they have been uh, uh, in some countries where they are using chloroquine as a way of treating, but the minister even has addressed that at some point. He said, he said there is no medicine at the moment. There is no medicine, there is no, there's nothing. So what I think, if I heard him correct, what they are treating is they are, treat, they are treating the, uh, the other, other side effects. So you find that somebody who has got uh, uh, the virus, COVID, and then they have got maybe a headache, they have got a cough, they have got a what, they, they have got a flu, uh, I, they are treating those uh, uh, the cough, they will give you medicine for the cough uh, for the headache, they will give you medicine for the headache, they will give you medicine for all these other uh, side uh, I would call them, I'm not a medical personnel but they will give you medicine for that mm -hmm. but to say that there's a, a specific medicine that they are giving for COVID to cure you uh, I think that one the minister has been very clear and uh, uh, I think that we've heard, and even world over, we've heard. But we've heard also that the, some countries are using uh, whatever medicine, maybe chloroquine, which has been very pronounced, which uh, mm -hmm. which they were tested positive. Uh, it's God who has healed them. Uh, we will yeah, not say that we because, not, because we will not because they will say spiritual, right? <laughs> because that will be. But 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 then but then um, you are tested for a disease, you are positive. Mm -hmm. And then that disease, I know that mm -hmm. you, you may have uh, a certain disease and there may be effects, many effects in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, because of many other diseases, because you may find that one person has malaria, mm -hmm. has uh, uh, maybe uh, BP, has these many other uh, uh, conditions. Now, if you're saying that um, you test somebody positive, and then you Treat cure the side effects. Yes, and then that person is healed. Then I think uh, <laughs> that gives the uh, leaves a, a, a lot of questions. This is the reason why we are saying that at a time as this, mm -hmm. we need to protect ourselves. How do we protect ourselves? Don't move around anyhow. Be at one place. Be found with the people you know, because. Uh, you know, some of these uh, machines that they use, some of these uh, 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 instruments that they use to test, mm -hmm. some of them are not perfect. It's here in Zambia where a machine which was brought to test vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, it was on the news that uh, uh, we had a reporter saying that uh, one of the machines tested that the vehicle had no engine and that vehicle <laughs> was on the road. Yeah, there are many times that we have been to the hospitals, you are tested negative for malaria, uh -huh. but then um, maybe you are Symptoms just advised, you just advised that maybe, well, we may not uh, prescribe the malaria, uh, we may not give you the rightful malaria uh, medicine, but I think because of uh, the symptoms, this could be malaria, okay. and they, are, they give you the yes. malaria. Uh, Mr. Kamwanga. I think you are seriously wearing your, 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 your pasta uh, cup right now. <laughs> Can we go back on, on track again? There was a yeah. cry for a lockdown. Uh -huh. I don't know how you receive that one, especially that um, there were some of the concerns being raised with that uh, why didn't we just lock down at the moment that we heard that the, there was this? Why didn't we lock ourselves down at that particular moment so that we protect ourselves from, um, you know, even recording cases of COVID-19. COVID yeah, uh, maybe, uh, you know, it's easy for, for you and me to talk about a lockdown. But I think, I think I've, I've been very consistent uh, over the way the, 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 the government and the way the president has been handling the issue of COVID. Okay. It's easy for you and me to just go out right and say lockdown. But I think uh, when you look at it uh, um, maybe critically from the point of view of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the government, uh, 
it's not easy to declare a lockdown in this country. Mm -hmm. if, if we declare a lockdown in this country, it means that there's no movement. I mean, the examples, huh? mm -hmm. India declared a lockdown. But the people in India, they were revolting now because they were saying, uh, you, lock, you lock down the country, maybe you want to kill us with anger. You see that? Huh? So people were hungry and they went to the streets. And, and that became now total chaos. And we saw even the Prime Minister of India apologizing to the people that uh, maybe we shouldn't have uh, had the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the way Zambia has handled this, uh, uh, the COVID-19, uh, maybe the only folly that we have not done so well mm -hmm. is uh, probably what we should have done, in my uh, preferred opinion, is that we should have had, uh, I know that currently, I know that at the moment we have, uh, we have uh, uh, quarantine centers uh, at the borders. Mm -hmm. So uh, my preferred view would have, would have been that right from the word go, we should have had, uh, established those uh, um, uh, quarantine centers even at the borders, mm -hmm. right there. If you are entering from Livingstone, right there at the border, Zambia National Service sets up a tent, Zambia Army sets up a tent, uh, maybe even the Air Force, they set up tents there. Mm -hmm. So that they put you there. You stay in that tent until uh, you are able to, you are declared that you are free of the disease. Mm -hmm. I think that way uh, we would have the economy running within our, the country. Everything would be okay because we would know that the, those who are sick are at the borders. And uh, I think that is happening right now, but that is not, I, I don't think we are at, at in a position where we are doing it 100%. Of course, this is a new disease and we are all learning just like all the other governments are learning because uh, this disease is new, and Zambia is not, uh, maybe, Z Zambia is also just learning how to survive it. But the more practical thing to do for us as Zambians is to shut down the borders, not to really shut down the borders, but to make sure that the quarantine centers are, at, you are quarantined at the border just there. If you want to go out the country, you are told. My friend, if you go out the country, when you come back, you'll be here at the border for 14 days until you are declared uh, free of COVID. That's when you'll be reintegrated into society. Mm -hmm. I think that's a more practical way rather than a lockdown because a lockdown, the consequences of it, I think the, the repercussions of a lockdown on the regular Zambian, like the president said the, yesterday, the person who sells Chikanda, if you lock down, those, that woman who sells Imbarara uh, Natute uh, and you lock down the economy, what are they going to eat? Because, I mean, they, they, they go out there, they get they, a they 10 quarter. On, on a hand yeah. to mouth basis. Yeah, they get a 10 quarter or 20 quarter. That's what they used to eat. Mm -hmm. And then if you lock down, it means that they won't eat. So you find now people will revolt and they will go to the streets. All right. Like what's happening in India. Okay. Um, as we wind up looking at uh, time, it's not really our best ally right now. Can um, the country's economy rise after this i mean we've seen you know the the effects themselves we know that uh, uh the even the dollar against mm -hmm. the quacha really we've we've been hit so not we we are saying we've been hit hard but we know it could get worse mm -hmm. is the country able to rise again from this and what would be the projection what are we looking at uh, i think that is um a leadership issue yeah, the quacha has not gone down because of uh, COVID-19, no. Because COVID-19 is not only in Zambia. If anything in Zambia, the only recorded cases up to today, officially, were 39. I think I stand to be corrected. Yeah, they are should be now 40. 40, 40, 40, 40 because of the man who died. Yes. yes, 40. Now, how many cases do we have in the States today? It's thousands of people. Mm -hmm. but, so you, but we but cannot you, But, you, but you realize qualify. that all the currencies are losing value against the dollar? Yes, they are. Because uh, uh, everyone around the world is trying to buy the dollar because they believe when you get the dollar, you will retain the value of your money. My, 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 my producer is actually scrolling the, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> the closing I, I, credits. I, th I think the best thing that we need to, to understand is that it all depends on how you put more efforts in what you are doing. Okay. So my advice to our government is that we should not wait to a level where the kwacha will go down completely. All right. Let us do something. Thank you. Mr. Msonda, quickly in, 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 a, in a second. Mm -hmm. On the same issue? No, just, just wind up. 
Okay. Yeah, I think in winding up, I would just want to appeal to everyone in the country to adhere to the, the, the instructions that we have been given so that we avoid a situation where this country now also gets to a level where maybe these other European countries are in terms of uh, the COVID-19. Exactly. And uh, we, we need to make sure that we avoid that. I think that's how we save the economy from uh, collapsing. All right. This has been Blunt Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been uh, Charity Mtonga, and we've been looking at youth empowerment, and we touched quite a number of areas. Thank you for watching. Good night. Zambia, this nation. Yeah, yeah. Give us, you give us. <laughs> this is Zambia, the home of COVID. Hey kids, we shall win the fight against coronavirus. Yes, but to do so, you need to follow the following guidelines. Number one, wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Yes, and also use hand sanitizer. Number two, if you sneeze or cough, Make sure you cover your mouth. Number three, if you see someone having signs of being sick, stay far away from them. And number four, if you are sick yourself, lock yourself inside the house. Avoid people. And last but not least, make sure that you do not touch your mouth, eyes, or nose. Yes, do not touch your face. message is brought to you by Movie TV for the greater good of Mother Zambia. Coronavirus, coronavirus, it is a virus very pandemic. -y. Matenda a coronavirus, ndia sona. Tonsi mamozi, it is a wina nkondo ya Take it. Pembani Bampuno, Diva Gamapano, and Chawi Zonse, Pomen Sogomora. Pena kusitita, kaya kuye temura. Pewani kutinana, kaya kukarabu fubi kumbiri, ndi ena. Kala ni kunyumba, ndi bozipadureni wa ena. Ngadi simku mfabuino, mtubiranu. Osu kule bagamwa, mpunu ndi mato, ngadi manjanu, ndi adoti. Zwa ni kuri, donsi pomozi, ndi zawi na mkondo ya coronavirus. Ngadi ratisatila sumaga suida nchito za umoyo, akuri uza. Oku burusila ni utengao, ndi awa iresila kane mala movie tv. Abwenzia nubama vodo, ndi pa mtendere. Movie tv, kane ma ozi sankira. Hello, we are going to win the fight against the coronavirus, but to do that, we need to follow these basic prevention guidelines. It is important that you wash your hands regularly for 20 seconds with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub. Cover your nose and mouth with a disposable tissue or flexed elbow when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact at least one meter or three feet with people who are unwell. Stay home and self-isolate from others in the household if you